Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Mohamed Gamal. Mohamed Gamal about to make the walk down to the Pro Bella Marina. Seven and one record on this young man. And a finisher as well, six, six of his seven victories come by way of stoppage, two TKOs, four submissions. Also, a regional champion, the AUFC flyweight champion. This is a young man who's got experience, coming off back-to-back -back victories as well, looking to keep that ball rolling. A really exciting young fighter. Yeah, and one of the things that he likes to do is, is about working at his in his mind range and he's really good at it in his last two fights we were able to see that that on when we were standing he was able to land strikes in the fight prior to his last fight once it got to the point where he felt comfortable to take it to the ground he did and he was able to get the submission that exciting young fighter out of egypt I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> Aaron Abbey making his way to the cage, and, and this is a young man whose story everybody should know. He is the epitome of what a fighter is. He's never going to fight any tougher battles than the ones he's fought outside the cage, which makes him even more dangerous inside the cage. This is a young man that never thought he'd fight again after being diagnosed with the big C cancer. He's overcome that. I, Big proponent for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Another, another thing that he has had to deal with as a professional fighter and as an amateur. It, things, it affects the weight cut. It affects everything. But this young man's will cannot be denied. I, ca I call him the flyweight Superman. It's as simple as that. There is nothing that he's going to be fearful of when he steps into the cage. I and again, that, that means Kamal's got to work his game. You kind of know what you're going to get from Abby, not in a negative way, but you know what you're going to get. It's going to be a lot of pressure. It's going to be in face because he ha he doesn't have that fear. So Kamal's going to have to work around that, meaning he's got to go, okay, I know exactly what's going to come at me, so I need to fight my fight. Absolutely. And 10 3 and 1, one record for Abby. And again, the following contest takes place in the pro Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, standing five foot four inches tall, from Cairo, Egypt, Mohamed Gamal. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, standing five foot five inches tall, from Wrexham, Wales, Aaron Abbey. Just saying, we know Gamal's a finisher. AB, a 50% finish rate as well. Four subs, one KO. These are two young men that know how to finish fights. Touch of gloves, and here we go. I do look that AB got the memo that he was going to be in the red corner, so he's wearing the red trunks. Uh, it's always nice. It makes life easy for us sitting outside here. Again, two flyweights here, so we're going to expect constant movement. And just as I was going to talk about the fact that Abby was controlling the center of the cage and starting to move Gamal back, Gamal comes forward. Well, Gamal's in that southpaw stance, which can be very difficult for an orthodox fighter if they're not used to it, because you start, you, you see things like in a mirror. Nice duck under there by Abby, immediately on the takedown. Pushing his man. Steps over and he's gonna sit in that half guard now in a position you know quite well. Yeah, I, I'm a big proponent. I'm not really a fan of mount. I, I prefer the half guard. You're able to sit down on that leg, whether it's knees to the body, elbows from the top, 
you can also start to work off of setting up submissions via arm triangle choke or the von flute choke there's a lot that you can do from half guard as opposed to what you can do from side or mount well, I certainly one of the people you used to work and train with the randy couture the king of pounding it out from from that half guard position locked it down was able to land almost at will and again Abby not not abby's not made a move to try and pass yet he, again happy in that position and what he's done is he's moved Gamal's head to where it's stuck up against the cage so he's not even able to use a wall walk i.e if his shoulder was at the cage and by controlling that and sitting down on that leg he's able to land punches set up elbows knees to the body as he just did there and those things will the more that they start to come across will be the more opportunities to set up potential either submissions or to posture up and land more punches another little knee to the body there and love to see that but gamal's smart if you notice he's stretching out abby's leg and what that does is it controls abby's posture abby's not going to be able to actually be able to get up to throw punches he's going to have to continue to do it from kind of a flat position so he won't be able to get any power in him abby though keeping pressure on so it's not allowing gamal to, to find that way to stand and steps over now into the mount Gamal doing the right thing, trying to turn those hips, get the feet against the fence. And he was off. able to get back to half guard. Yeah, certainly not looking like he's panicking. Gamal in, uh, in the bottom at all. He's defended himself well at the moment. No, he hasn't taken a lot of damage because he's been able to control the posture using his legs and also using wrapping. And here he goes back to full guard. Now he'll be able to either work some missions off his back or really control the posture and not take as much damage. A few of the shots must have got through. A little bit of blood on the bridge of Gamal's nose now. And as you see at these lighter weight class, it's constant movement. There's no sitting and settling. You're always trying to advance your position and get to, to a more dominant position to be able to rain down punches. Tried, tried to get the butterflies in there. Abby wise to that. But again, as you pointed out, Gamal not taking anything from Blon. Now looking to stand, gets his back to the cage. And as soon as he was able to get his shoulder on the cage, he started to work his way up. His head had been stuck against the cage for a large percentage of that time they were on the ground. The minute his shoulder was there, he started to work up. Oh, nice trip. And again, Abby in top position, this time working in the open guard. And now he's out to the center of the cage, so he, he doesn't have to worry about the, the wall walk. He doesn't have to worry about maybe a switch coming off of it. So he can start to work for, you know, may it be you know, the Von Flew or a head and arm triangle. But if you notice, every time he starts to maneuver to get to a more dominant position, Kamal's reworking to get that guard to try and nullify any offense Abby's doing. And if Abby, if Abby takes, you know, loses concentration for even a second we saw we saw Gamal throw that elbow from the bottom with some vicious intention he's not gonna capitulate down there good first round from the young man from the UK but Mahad Gamal look looks fresh looks calm took very little damage superficial little cut over the nose but was able to get out of those positions and he did it by constantly moving so he, he even when he was settled in he was on his back and he was like okay i gotta get a shoulder off of the mat or whatever he constantly was looking and moving to try to figure out as we can see in the replay here this sets up the takedown that came in and it came in strictly off of I'm going to try to throw a combination, see what happens, close the distance, shot right underneath that right hand from Gamal. And that was kind of the tail of the entire round at that point. But we did see Gamal do a lot of smart things as far as the lockdown on the leg, controlling the posture, and not taking severe damage, whether it was when he was mounted or in half guard, and easily, I wouldn't say easily, quickly got back to half guard after he was mounted. And managed to get back up to his feet before the, before the end of the round.
no quitting the young Egyptian whatsoever. What do you expect him to do a little bit differently? Uh, one of the things is I wouldn't throw that looping left hand. That's what set up that takedown. I would work, work more off of the jab. It's really easy for a southpaw to be able to constantly pepper that jab out there and then be effective with, like, the inside leg kick. It's the, it's the disadvantage that the, bo the, 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 the body is open for that. You know, when you've got a southpaw versus an orthodox fight, it leaves the body open. And it's because you don't have, there's not a lot of southpaws in the gym, so you don't see it a lot. So for some guys, they might be, you know, seven, eight fights deep, and they've never even sparred with a southpaw. So just getting that kind of sensation, it can be troublesome. Again, Gamal does a great job. Aby's looking to slide that knee through, slide the pass, and Gamal just doesn't let it. He locks down and then stretches it out again. This is, not a, this is not a young man who's going to capitulate just because he's not in the dominant position. No, and if you notice what he's doing, he's moving to find ways to where if Abby makes a mistake, he's able to capitalize on it. Nice, strong There's a bit of strength there, but now he's got that position against Aaron. Look. Now, what do you... So he's taking the back and it, he... he what he's doing is he's controlling the forearm so that Abby can't roll all the way through, and he's looking to get to exactly what he had, which was side control. And he did all of that by having risk the far wrist control on his left hand. Just looking if he's looking to maybe tr think about... I thought he was looking maybe about a Kimura or a key lock. Well, Kimura would be, and key lock would be difficult because his hand's wrapped around yeah. behind the back. But what you do is you use it for a control position to get somewhere. Now, if you notice what he's done, he's also moved to half guard and set down. Abby's smart, though. He was able to get that underhook right away to start to try to, you know, get free. It looks like that's an arm in guillotine. Is he under the chin? Right. Well, no, I think so, Abby. Doesn't look too too concerned with it yet. No. Throwing some elbows into the thigh, and is it gonna? If he pops his head out, it's gonna be Abby in top position again in, in that half guard. And again, Kamal's head is sitting on the side of the Pro Bella Marina. And so it makes it very difficult for him to start to posture up or to move. And that led to that mount now taking the back. Abby right in his corner. The nightmare, Steve Nightingale. Shout, just talking into his fighter's ear. You're a coach. You encourage your fighters, if possible, to bring the fight over to your side of the cage, into your corner. Oh, I tell him pick him up the double and carry him over there. I... I we practice that all the time. I have him carry him across the room. Because then I can sit there and tell him something. I don't care if that guy can hear me. Do it better than what he can defend. Again, you can almost see them having a conversation. The coach and, and Abby there. Abby on the back now. But, oh, good strength from... Well, Kamal was able to set that up because Abby's legs were a little bit wide, and so he's able to turn his hips. And he just needs to continue to try to slide that arm through, and once he does, he won't be in that precarious position. Takes. Can't see if he's inside the inside the guard. Looks like looks like Aaron was trying to lock up that left arm. Yeah, he, he's really trying to dig deep for that Kimura. Kamal's smart, though, because he's sitting on it. And anytime he feels like there's a little bit of pressure, he's reaching around the body to try to grab a hold of his own wrist to block it. I'm trying to bring that knee up to the, as a knee shield. But Kamal, again, wise to that. And, oh, got to be... Got to be careful that triangle, doing the right thing, trying to posture up, drive the knees up into the tailbone. Yeah, and at 35 seconds left, or 30 seconds left now, the, the whole key behind this one is to make sure that that arm does not come across his chest, which if you look, he's really struggling very hard to make sure it is. And then he's looking to control the arm, or control the hips to where he can't get elbowed from bottom. 
Again, Abby on the single, but great work from Gamal. This is, this is, this is an entertaining fight. Again, we got a bit more marking up on the face of Gamal, but there's some blood trickling from the nose of Abby. And, and Gamal's still jumping around. He's still moving. Uh, it looks to be a cut over his eye. Yeah, Cutman Bob there in the corner. One of the best in the business. So here's the thing. I'm over in Abby's corner. I'm telling him, look, we need to get this to the ground, but I want you to be a little bit more active when you're on top. Because as, you're, as we can see from here, when he wasn't being active, that's when Gamal was able to move because he was setting it up by doing things. He finished it right here. But if you look as well as Gamal was smart, he kept, look, hands placed way at the shoulders. And he's doing that so he's not going to get elbowed. Turned his hips to be able to slide out of it. And as he did, he rotated his shoulders so that arm bar wouldn't be effective and was already swimming it out. Wow. Third and final round about to begin. Our referee, Mr. Mark Goddard, starts it off. And this has been an entertaining, entertaining little scrap. Muhammad Kamal, the black shorts. Aaron Abbey getting the wardrobe notice, as you pointed out, in the red. And you'd think that whoever sets the pace of this round could go on to win this fight. It could be split right now. It could be split right now. And what you'd want to do for Abbey is you want to back him up and set that shot up. You were able to get two takedowns, one in each round, and they were effective to be able to keep the grappling for Gamal. It's about footwork. I had said it when we talked about it. Abby's going to be in your face, constantly coming out at you, and the way that he's going to be able to win is to be able to circle off, use his strikes effectively, and shoot when he needed to. Nice wide base from Gamal here. Going to make it real hard for Abby to connect those fingers. Trying to pick the ankle now. He switched off to that single. He's got to elevate. Kamal's doing everything right. He's got that cross face nice and deep. He's working that two-on-one with that cross face. It's now pulled Abby all the way up. He's got his hips, and he's being heavy. Because if you notice that up on his toes, that's because he's trying to keep his butt as low as possible. But Abby's doing it correctly. He's driving his head up inside to push him back and force the opportunity to reshoot and take that double. Again, looking to try and pick that ankle, then changes it back to the single. Yeah, but Kamal's blocking. He's got that leg on the outside. If you notice, he's forcing like he did there. That helped to keep him from not being taken down. He used that as a block. As Abby tried to move, he was able to then trip, use the Kimura that he was grabbing on to not be taken down. Landing some short elbows to the side of Abby's head there. And another. Again, Gamal refuses to capitulate with his back to the cage. He's still busy working to defend. Throws the shots in when he can. Keeps that nice white base. Again, we pointed out in, in the last fight that this kind of, this is work. Hands locked. So Abby was able to slide his hands in to lock him for that double leg. And he did it as Gamal was throwing those pitter-patter little uh, elbows. But just like the, just as if the canvas was on fire, Gamal, as soon as his backside hit, bounced straight back up. Looking for the Kimura there. And Gamal was able to use that to get Abby down. And now he's in side control. Abby, though, has his feet up against the cage, which he can use. But Gamal, notice what he's doing. He's turning, lifting him off the mat to turn him. Now, a few little shoulder shrugs. But Gamal, Abby had that uh, underhook, which was allowed him to slip out. Now he's able to stand up. And now in on, is he in on the double? Gotta be, and no finish from side control, but Gamal, for a moment, looked like he was gonna rip the head off. Had to let go of the neck, so we've got Abby inside. Full guard. And the open guard. See how he, you kept pointing, he keeps lacing those legs, making sure Abby can't pull him in. Yeah, and it's a lockdown position. So what it allows for him to do is it controls it, and he works that half butterfly guard now because he's going to look for, okay, where can I get that sweep again? Can I pull that sweep again, whether it's off of, you know, 
work in the Kimura, or am I going to be able to at least clear the hips enough to where I can pop my hips back out? And if you notice what he's doing, he's slowly, and he keeps looking for it. He's looking to the cage because he's backing his way up to it, and he'll push off Abby, and he's looking back to see where it's at because he wants to get that shoulder on the cage so, again, he can stand up. Abby needs to turn his head to where, as he did now with his hips, and that'll change the tra trajectory. So where now it's Kamal's head is up against that cage instead of his shoulder. And I tried to use that butterfly to push Abby off. And Abby now sitting in that half guard. And Kamal's got the lockdown on, so Abby's not going to be able to do a lot as far as being able to step over. I mean, the, you can see the experience of these two fighters. I mean, in the side control. Starts to throw down some shots. And that's the end of the fight. We're going to go to a judge's decision. And Both fighters raising their arms. Gamal up on the cage. Well, you've said it. You've said it a number of times tonight. Glad it's somebody else's decision, not mine. No, I'm glad I'm here talking about the fights. I um, I have no desire to be the one that's actually ringing up ten nines. Well matched contest here. Pro Bellum matchmaker's done a good job here. And if we look back at the highlights, we see some of. Here's that little sweep that Gamal was able to get. Now, he hit it there, and it didn't work out. He hit it again, and it did. So it wasn't one of those things where he went to the well too many times. It was one of those things that he set it up. He saw that it was available. He just needed to get a little bit farther away from the cage when he did it, and that's how he was able to spin. Both fighters having their moment in this. and You know, sometimes you... I'm sure the athletes don't feel it, but sometimes round four and round five would, would be appreciated. Our, our MC has got the decision, so let's turn it over to the Viking, and he'll make this result official. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is decided with a unanimous judge's decision, and your winner, fighting down the red corner! Is that, a, is that a question of just a little more pressure, a little more time on top, a little more? Yeah, I mean, he spent a large percentage of the first round in top position in a dominant position. He also spent quite a bit of time in the second round doing the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen.